Hello and welcome to Beyond the Schedule, a look at ID8 BIMLINK and BIM coordinate data for use in virtual design and construction. When you think about Revit and extracting building information modeling data from a schedule, you think of ID8 BIMLINK, which has been the leader in Revit data management since 2010. ID8 BIMLINK is great for taking large volumes of scheduled data and letting you easily edit it in Excel. But did you know that ID8 BIMLINK can also edit family and type names to standardize your model naming, making your Kobe deliverable process a no-brainer, access unshared parameter data, making it easy to modify the size, shape, and materials of custom Revit families, such as connectors, foundations, or custom framing members. You can also use BIMLINK to create new content, such as new sheets, rooms, or even generic models. And BIMLINK can also be used to manage revision data and create a complete drawing index to save time while reducing liability. And all VDC and GC BIM gurus love the fact that BIMLINK can be used to generate early stage quantity takeoffs. A BIMLINK QTO can include additional non-scheduled data essential to success, such as all the phases at once, design option data, room data for elements across linked files, and most importantly, a BIMLINK takeoff is a comprehensive multi-category export, including length and area fields. In this video, we will demonstrate another unique feature of BIMLINK, coordinate data. We'll demonstrate how we can leverage coordinate data to bring new levels of quality control and efficiency to your building information modeling. We'll begin by reviewing how to access coordinate data and also how to access host data. And then we'll review three examples of how coordinate data can support both pre-construction and construction tasks to improve your bottom line. Before we can discuss workflows, we should review how to access coordinate data inside of ID8 BIMLINK. In the example shown here, we are using the out-of-the-box sample link called Kobe coordinate, which includes the point coordinate data for XYZ. You can see that the drop-down list shows coordinates as a related table from which we can select several different types of coordinate data. ID8 BIMLINK provides access to four different kinds of coordinate data, which is outlined in the online help, which is shown at left here. While rooms and floors have bounding box coordinates, for example, beams, columns, and ducts will have line-based coordinate data. In another sample link, shown at right called QC grids, we can see how the use of the line XY angle property can be used to spot grids that may be off access. Host data is another kind of related data that we will want to use for our construction related workflows. This is information that relates to the element, which is hosting the main element. For example, the host data could be used to tell you about the wall orientation when reporting about a curtain panel. It can also tell you about the mark number of the foundation when you're reporting on a family that's hosted by that foundation, as we'll see in a short bit. Now that we understand coordinate data and host data within BIMLINK, let's review how it can be best leveraged to improve accuracy and reduce the construction timeline. BIM coordinate data can be used in construction coordination by taking the XYZ values from the model and then using on-site laser tools to import and shoot points in the field. Some of the common examples relate to the coordination of structural foundations, laying out complex curtain walls, or identifying the hangar locations for ductwork and cable trays. In this example, we're using the out-of-the-box sample for Kobe to investigate the kinds of coordinate data that's available. By default, we see just the XYZ point data, but we can also choose to add in some of the other types of coordinate data. For example, we can add in the bounding box data this is the kind of data that would apply to ceilings, floors, rooms, or spaces. While this generic coordinate data is fine for COBE requirements in IFC, it's generally not specific enough for use in construction coordination. So we need to think about building specific points into our model. In this foundation family, for example, we've nested four generic model families as points one at each of the edges where we'd like to report the coordinate data. 
We've set up the family so that it displays these points more clearly when the level of detail is set to fine, which will make for easier viewing within the model environment later. If we report on the XYZ of the foundation as it stands, we'd only get one point, but with this nesting, we'll be able to get all four. Now we can use BIMLink to report on the generic model elements by creating a new link. We can select from the list of sample links provided and use the one called Generic Model Survey Points for this task. This will list every generic model element in the file and its XYZ value, along with some information about the host. Notice that the link is filtering only to display those that contain the family name ID8. The exported Excel file contains the information essential to the surveyor who can import the results into a total station or similar point layout machine. The ability to report on the nested family means we get complete control over the range and type of point data needed. With BIMLink, the inclusion of the host data makes it easy to align the site conditions with the building information model. As we've shown, it's easy to use BIMLink to take BIM data to the field. Now, we'll take a look at the opposite workflow, taking field data back into the Revit model. Typically, this is done by obtaining a common delimited file, which any surveyor can generate, and then using that data to compare the accuracy of the as-built conditions against your building information model. Let's see how. To take survey data from the field and into your Revit model, we'll use BIMLink's ability to create and place generic model families as points within the model. To import the points, the process is first obtain point data from a survey. Typically, this will be in a common delimited or CSV file format. Then we'll use BIMLink to generate an Excel template file. Then we'll copy and paste the data from the survey into this template file. And then lastly, we'll import the updated Excel data into the Revit model via BIMLink to create specific point families within the Revit project. Step number one is to obtain the survey data. In this example, the common delimited or CSV file can be opened and reviewed in Excel. The column header information will vary, but should clearly indicate the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Step two is to use BIMLink to generate an Excel template file that can be used to create new generic model elements as points. Let's see how. Here, I'm working on the task of generating an Excel template file. I can create a new link definition based on generic models, then select the sample link called Generic Model Create New. This link includes the level field, which is not needed for this example. Instead, we we'll want to utilize the Z coordinate point to identify the absolute position from our survey data. After making this change, I'll export the file as a template deleting any content from the existing file and leaving only the Excel headers and the first row for reference. Now that we have the BIMLink template file, we're ready to proceed to step three, where we copy the survey data into this template. On my screen, I've set up the template file on the right and the survey file on the left, that's the CSV file. Um, the process is simply to make sure that the XYZ values from the survey data on the left gets copied over into the appropriate columns on the right hand side. Um, from the BIM link file, what's, what's critical is that the names of the uh, first row, the column headers there, that, that they match up with what's in BIM link. Uh, and it's also important that the tab name corresponds to the link definition in BIM link. But other than that, you could always create this file from scratch if you'd like. So um, making sure they're, you know, the XYZs are organized in the same fashion, you can simply just do a copy from one and then a paste into the other file. Uh, I've left the, the family and type column there. That references the exact name of the generic model family that we're using. Um, it's part of the data set. Um, that we can share with our BIMLink customers. It's also, there's a similar family that ships with BIMLink and you can read about that in the help file. And so you're gonna wanna spec, uh, stipulate that you, that particular generic uh, family is used to create the points. That's a family that is non-work plane based. So it can be sort of floating. 
and then we can ignore the level field. So uh, for column A, the ID, it's important to have the word new. Um, and as long as that's true, then we'll be able to create new generic model elements based on the data as displayed here. Now that our Excel file is complete, we can move back to the Revit environment. Our first step is to place one instance of our point family. And uh, this is an important step that you have to do before you can place or create new points. Um, BIMLink needs to use the last placed model component um, as its sort of source. So after you do that, you can actually delete it and then you can launch BIMLink and we'll select our link definition and then browse to our Excel file. On import, it will create those points, those generic model families at the XYZ specified. And then we can take a look at how the existing sanitary line uh, per the survey data, how it lines up with what we've modeled so far. And with this particular family, you might remember, we can adjust the level of detail to look at the family, either with a sort of round orb or just with these lines as shown here. And so we can see that there is a discrepancy here between uh, what's modeled and what's on site. Now that you've seen how ID BIMLink can both import and export coordinate data, you may be wondering how that same data can be displayed inside of a Revit schedule. So now that we know how to access coordinate data via BIMLink, uh, you may find that you need to report that same information within a schedule environment. Uh, before we can even do that, we need to find a parameter that we can report the information into. Um, in this data set, what I've done is we've set up uh, three different parameters, X, Y, and Z parameters. Um, and you can see that they're empty there in the schedule below. Um, the parameters we've set up are shared. They don't need to be shared. I've made them shared so that they can exist in a tag for other purposes, um, but they could also just be a project parameter. Um, and of course, the other part is that you need to assign it to report on the node element, which is, again, it's a generic model element. So you can see that, um, that we've done that here in this schedule. And so then the next step would be to use BIMLink to fill in that data. Um, and so what we'll do here is we'll use the front schedule option and we can see the schedule that we've already set up. Um, it's instance-based data. That's an important aspect. Coordinate data is always going to be instance-based. And then we can take a look at that value here. And you can see this is what the schedule looks like. And of course, what we're looking for is the coordinate data and the XYZ values of those points. So we'll add all three of them. All right, and then we'll go ahead and hit done. And then we'll go ahead and export that information. We're gonna go ahead and do that here. And really what we're doing is we're just taking data from from here and we're going to copy and paste it over into our shared parameters so that it can be displayed. So go ahead here and here. Go ahead and go ahead and close that and save it. And then we'll go ahead and import that information. You can see the items that are changed up above. And we'll go ahead and import that. And there we have it. So that's just the way that you can essentially map the data from BIMLink, which knows about the coordinate values, um, and expose them um, inside the Revit environment for, within your schedule. So whether you need to display coordinate data inside of Revit or need to use this kind of BIM data for construction coordination, ID8 BIMLink can support your needs. To recap, in this video, we've covered how to access Revit coordinate data, how to access host data, and we reviewed three time-saving workflows that leverage coordinate data, exporting coordinates for use in the field, creating coordinates within the building information model, 
and reporting coordinate data within a schedule. To learn how others are using ID at BIMLINK to drive greater efficiencies within their Revit projects, check out the How To section of our online help files. Making the most of your BIM data is what ID at BIMLINK is all about. Stay competitive by using BIMLINK to improve coordination and shorten your project timeline. You can download a free trial and test drive today. Thanks for watching. Learn more about ID at BIMLINK online at ID8software.com.